Welcome back and you're still watching Wave. So we're straight to what's in the news. Who do we start with? Hmm. I'm start with Jennifer. Jennifer, what did you find for us in the news today? Oh. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> why, why the drama? She just said, mm, says, I think it's, okay. it's a mannerism. She's always saying, mm, I'm she's always talking. saying that. I think it's because every time I look for a news, it's always like, what else has happened? There's always something okay. interesting. Mm. No problem. So, so um, Abia government begs teachers to call off strike. Mm. So basically, the Abia state government has urged teachers in the state to resume classes by March 1st, 2020. And what's the reason for this strike? They haven't been paid in a while. Mm. But the Abia state government has begged them and he said that um, they're working on the payments that they haven't done in a while and that uh, they've um, already um, brought up um, about 1.1 billion naira to to have them to take sorry to offset the payment and all of that but the teachers basically they want to see the work of the government they want to see that they're actually serious because i mean there are so many bodies or institutions that have gone on strike several times and still nothing has been done. The government will make promises and they still cannot deliver. So what the government is saying is, okay, we've brought this money. We want you guys to go back to school and keep teaching and then we'll complete the rest. But we've not heard from the teachers yet. I would love to hear what the teachers have to say. Okay. The teachers teachers, teachers have families. <laughs> they want to be paid. And to just think about, you know, the aftermath of COVID, the effect it has on people's finances, and the fact that you haven't been paid, it must you know, be a very tough one to take. So, is he, is he, is he, what's okay. in there What, in what actually us? struck me today when I went um, session for news was um, FG, US, div on the, no, let me take this. FGUS, other developed countries also record school kidnapping. Now, this actually spoke to me because do we have to imbibe or take in what is being um, so practiced who's the story? in who other said countries? This? Who said this? No, I'm, said, I'm okay. getting there. I'm getting there. Do we have to do this? The, this, the state of insecurity in the country, we all know that it is bad. When I was coming in from the East, I went to the East for my father-in-law's funeral. And during, the, uh, during my trip back, what I saw was like, we are prepping up for war. I mm. saw sacks of um, um, sands with, um, you know, like for trenches for, for, like trenches for um, the military personnel. So for, the, for Lai Mohammed, the Honorable Minister of mm. Information and Culture, to tell us that it is it is okay practically that it is okay for um, us to experience or our children to experience kidnapping in schools where they are supposed to be learning and getting more information to turn the situation in the country to uh, for better it is absurd totally absurd mm. and when he said this he though he made some salient points when he was talking about other things. But what actually struck me was that he said that government will not pay any ransom to bring these children and the teachers back. Now, the key thing is this. The last kidnap that happened, we had two stories or diverse stories, just yeah. like anything that happens in Nigeria. We had a story of they, they paid a ransom. We mm -hmm. had the story of they, they actually rescued the um, kid, the abductees at the time, but in this case now they are telling us that they are not going to be, uh, they are not going to pay any ransom. So is it okay for us to mm. have our children kidnapped while they are in school? Why didn't Dai Mohammed say something like, "Oh, we are going to emulate having good roads, good services, good telephone <laughs> network"? Why didn't they emulate the positives from Amer from America? Why would they emulate the negatives? So you have, um, you see, you have really, really touched on raw net there. And for me, I've always said one. I'm not surprised that he's making that statement because he's always he's been known for making statements carelessly. But I've always said it. Our leaders need um, training in communication. Okay, I so that they need to learn. <laughs> no, because seriously, you're in a very important, you know, position, and and then you can say things like this in the public. Let me just quickly take. Um, my news and my news is just reminding us that COVID is still there. So okay. it's taken from the punch. NCDC calls for calm as another COVID-19 variant surfaces in Nigeria. So um, 
what is it said is that there's a new strain, the B1, the B.125, which is different from the infectious one that we had, the B.117. Another variant. Another variant. But he's saying that it's under control. We shouldn't panic, but it's out there. Ooh. Okay, that is out there. And I know that, you know, during December, January, we had the second wave, and, you know, things were spiking and they were coming down. Exactly. I just want everybody to just... Please just bear with us if there's a regulation where your max when you're in public, please do it. Because really, we do not want to go through that phase. We have been very lucky. Less than 1% of the people that are affected have died. Mm -hmm. um, America, today, if you listen to the news, recorded over 500,000 deaths. Wow. So I would say that we're indeed blessed that this thing has not really Absolutely. spread, but we should all be careful out there. So, um, well, some people are still saying there is no COVID, though. <laughs> well, well, you, you aren't wrong. Still you, are, you aren't wrong. Yes, yes. they're still skeptics. Mm. So, that's what we found in the news. But um, we would come back after this short break and dig into our topic. See you later.